can you take us through the whole process of Eats Avenue and how it's ended up here? Okay. First of all, I want to start from like the beginning, how I met my business partner. Really explain in details Eats Avenue, the ownership. My first mistake was going on UTV and saying that I'm a, uh, owner. I'm the owner. I had ownership. I signed. It hurts me that no one sees my hard work. If I wake up in the morning, I'm thinking about how to promote Eats Avenue, how to get it to the people. That's why within five months, the whole of Ghana knows Eats Avenue. There, my co-owner saw me chopping the guy at the restaurants. Mm? Oh. She fucked me over. She, like, bro, it was so bad and death. Me, as a woman, I'm getting older. I want to settle down. I want to have kids. What do I do in this situation? Today, we have serious matters to discuss and unpack. Welcome to another episode of The Rants Band and mostly on today's conference. Oh, Mami Uye. Mami Uye, sorry, Wahima. Yes. So, I'm here. My name is Princess Berland. I'm Gisela Amponsa. And then thank you so much, Jumbo Spaces, for hosting us here. Today, I don't really have time to do all of that because we have some confessions to listen to. So can we like just get into it? Yeah, so today's topic is women in business and the stereotypes. Um, all through the, um, the episodes we've had recently, we are always, always, always hyping Eats Avenue. And we've suddenly heard that Eats Avenue doesn't belong to you if you are. <laughs> so we want to understand. I didn't talk to you about this because I wanted to hear, hear everything here fresh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want to discover everything. So can you take us through the whole process of Eats Avenue and how it's ended up here? Okay. So um, first of all, I want to start from like the beginning, how I met my business partner. I'm sure you guys already know who he is by now. So we met in, uh, I first came to Ghana around 2015. So we met like maybe a year or two after, let's say 2017 or 16 around there, we met to a mutual friend, um, this this young girl. So we all became like friends. Like I even saw him to be like someone, like an uncle. Or like he was like a father figure to me. So I always call him uncle, uncle, oh, uncle, uncle. Anybody who asks me who he is, oh, that's my uncle, that's my uncle. And um, he was into real estate. When I first met him, he had done his project in Spintex. Uh, it's like an apartment and it has like a little... I had like a small restaurant, kitchen kind of thing there. And me, I cook. I cook very well. Anybody who knows me knows me, I cook. I cook for 10 friends. <laughs> so like I cook very well. And then we always talked about like doing business together. He's someone, when, he's a, when, when you're around him, he wants you to like grow. He's very supportive. And he saw like how hardworking of a person that I am. Like I've never been a dependent kind of person. So he brought this um, restaurant idea up because of, one his the the restaurant in his in his apartment complex thing, and then me I cook. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm something. I think that's a good idea. Like yeah, but he didn't think I was ready that time because that time too I was very young. I was still like trying to figure out myself within the industry. But the idea always came about. If you're restaurants on my end, yeah, then I then I'm doing my music. Then you see me doing this. Then you see me doing that. So it was just this year that um. He was like, I feel I'm really serious about this restaurant thing. Like, if you do it, like, we'll make a lot of money. Because mm -hmm. he, he owns he owns hotels. He owns apartments. He knows how lucrative the food industry is. Mm -hmm. So um, he sat me down. He's like, are you sure you want us to do this? Like, are you ready for I'm like, oh, I'm, like, myself, I'm ready. Like, I want to do it. And one thing about me, anything that I do that I, I put my energy to, like, I put my mind to, like, I go full throttle for it. Like, 100%. I put 100% percent everything that I do so um that's when we started the whole eat at first we're trying to find a name we got the name we went to register it um percentages so it's not like it's not like it's avenue it wasn't mine it was a partnership mm -hmm. uh I co-owned it and I think I think one thing that kind of messed me up fucked me over was that when I went on UTV mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to really explain in details, it's avenue, the ownership. But you know, sometimes too, like when the cameras are on you when you're in the moments of things, like you might over-exaggerate truths. And that's what I did. That's That was my first fuck up. Because people were like attacking me, calling me a manager of the restaurant. I don't even own the restaurant. Um, Sister Fia, the whole Sister Fia issue, she came online dissing me about the restaurant. So like 
she, I felt like she was attacking my ego. Like, she, you know, I was like, ah, this girl, you don't know what you're talking about. Like, I'm not no fucking manager. Like, a bad bitch like me, I cannot be no manager. Like, I've come too far in the industry in my life to just be... Even though being a manager of a, of, a, of, a, of a company, there's nothing wrong with it. But I knew I was more than that. So my first mistake was going on UTV and saying that I'm a, uh, owner. I'm the owner. I should have said, oh, I'm a co-owner. I have shares in the restaurant. Mm-hmm. The reason why people might think I'm a manager is because, yes, they see me there every day. Because one thing about me, I don't play with my money. I don't play with hospitality. I don't play with people, especially like, you know, the food business that you can't... You can't want to mean John Hossa for people to just manage. You have mm-hmm. to be there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was staying at the apartment. So, so the restaurant was on top of Mr. Sapon's um, apartment complex. So he even said it's a good idea for me to even stay there so that my eye can go on the workouts, on the food, how things go, going to the markets. I was going to the market with my assistants. Like I was that involved in it where people thought I was a manager because they saw me there every day. I mean, if something is mine, I'm going to promote it all the time. Mm-hmm. That's going to be, if I wake up in the morning, I'm thinking about how to promote Eats Avenue, how to get it to the people. That's why within five months, the whole of Ghana knows Eats Avenue because of how well I marketed it. So it's not like, Eats Avenue didn't belong to me. I co-owned it. Mm-hmm. I have shares in it. Mm-hmm. I also managed the place. Mm-hmm. Like I managed, I managed, I was in the kitchen. I was tasting the food. I was making sure that things are coming out right. Um, speaking to customers, you know, doing what I had to do as a business owner mm-hmm. and as a, let's say, I guess a manager of the place. Because like I said, it's a business that I've put my name on. I've attached myself to it. So, um... Behind, behind the scenes, there was a lot of disturbances going on. People now started rumors mm-hmm. because they saw my car every day at the apartment complex. Mm-hmm. They started creating stories that the man and I are dating, mm-hmm. that we're in a relationship, that's um, just a lot. And, and, and that's the messed up thing about it because I mean, someone is someone that I respect so much and like he's, he's really put me on a pedestal, like on a level, like would be, he's opened my eyes to the business aspect. Even me as a woman, he, you know, he made me see it like I say, you have words, like you have words. Like he made me feel like a woman of substance because like he puts a lot of energy into people that he's around. Anybody who's around you, he puts energy into you. So um, I didn't like the idea that people were now saying that we're dating. It was even ruining some of the relationships that I was getting myself into. Mm-hmm. I'll be talking to a guy. Yeah. Things will get awkward. He starts to come up acting, acting funny. Why? Oh, he starts to question me even about my car. Why am I even stay asking me why am I even why do I have to stay at the apartment? Why can't I just go home and come back and forth? So he started hearing the rumors about the whole fake relationship. I Miss mean, Upon and I was very platonic. Like I say, he's someone that I saw to be like my uncle. But the rumors and the hearsay and like even I even saw people on TikTok saying the weirdest things about him and I. So false. So those were some factors that ended up to where we are now. Mm-hmm. Why I had to take myself out of the, out of the equation um, physically mm-hmm. with each avenue and say that I'm no longer a feeling because it was just too much going on. Mm-hmm. It hurts me that no one sees my hard work. Mm-hmm. You put, I put so much energy into this thing for it to now be like, oh, Papa, you do me. Mm. And you know the business. I'm man. he's yeah. he's he's chopping me. He's 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 spending it like lies. I'm a human being, bro. Like things as as tough as I am, and as a bad bitch that I am, these things once it's affecting my mental health, I have to just re- sit, sit back and kind of like rearrange things and see what's gonna debe me. Mm. So that was the main 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 reason why I had to like. It was, a t- it was a tough decision because mm-hmm. this is somebody I've known since 2016, 17. I've known him for a very long time since I come to Ghana. We've built this friendship. We've like, like, like we're some oil guy, like my pen asked him, but it's also ruining relationships that, I, that, that I'm getting myself into mm-hmm. because of rumors, not because of him, but what people are saying here, saying no matter, and no matter what I say, you know, the guys I talk to is like, oh, they don't believe me. And it's not my fault that they don't believe me, but Charlie, once one person is saying something and two people are, a whole bunch of people are saying the same thing, they'll say, oh, there must be some truth in it. Yeah. But there is no truth in it. Yes, I was staying there. I had my own room. Um, but I had to be at the restaurants. Like one time it was raining. 
I was like, hey, if I was staying at Spin Tech and if I wasn't here, the rain could have fucked everything up because it was raining so bad that they forgot to take out on oh, the drainage thing. The, the thing mm-hmm. They forgot to take it out. And then when I went upstairs, the whole place was flooded. Even the stock room was flooded. If I had not been there, we would have came to work and everything is messed up. Mm. So those are some reasons why I even had to stay at the apartment. It was more convenient for me to, you know, um, mon- monitor the workers, monitor the restaurant and make sure everything is okay. Like I said, I'm a very passionate worker like i'm sure you guys heard about the wine shop Mm -hmm. the wine shop thing although like yes i at that time i didn't have that much knowledge even about going into business with 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 people or or being a brand ambassador or friends in the business for people but although i didn't have any knowledge of that i was really hard working you see me at the shop every day i I even stopped going to quested tv i stopped my tv show because i felt like okay there's a business where i can make money from i was at the wine shop every day i was sweeping i was cleaning i was and that's the kind of person that i am whenever i get any kind of job any kind of ambassadorial deal any kind of business like I put my heart and my soul into it. So the thing with Eats Avenue, that's just what happened. And I'm no longer, like I said, affiliated upfront, but I still do have my shares in the business. Okay. <clears throat> so based on what you've told us, you guys didn't end on a bad note. No. So then why did you um, tweet it at your own risk? Because that made it seem like you guys had an issue and now you are no longer affiliated with them. Because then if you if you didn't end on a bad note and it's just rumors, then that means you still wish him well. Or if you still have your 40% share there, as you posted there, then it means that even if you are not there physically and each avenue is going still, well, you still get your 40% from it. Right. So then why did you tweet that it's at your own risk? Because then now... Put um, this thing aside. We are co-hosts. I go to Eat Avenue because of you. Yes. So me now, you say we should eat at my own risk. I won't go again. Now no. you are losing. <laughs> so the Eat at your own risk, it was more like, okay, now I'm not there. Yeah, I'm not there. Obviously, I feel like, first of all, I moved to the motions. It's something that I shouldn't have tweeted. Because like, like, like you said, people who are going there because of me, now it's like, hey, if you want to say Eat at your own risk, what are you trying to say? Like, now I'll be scared to, now, obviously that was something I shouldn't have done. I think... Looking back at it now, it was very childish of me, mm. but it was more like, okay, I'm not there. If anything happens, it's your own risk. Mm. Let's say you get a wrong order. Normally, people are coming to me in my DMs. I get messages like all the time. If you're though, my food is not coming, the dispatch. So I was doing a lot of the, I guess, P, not not PR, but more of handling issues. Like even my number was on the 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 box for like if you have complaints. So it was more of like if you have any complaints. Don't come to me about it. Go to the go to um, let's say call Eats Avenue on its own. Mm. Don't come into my DMs about it. Don't come and message me message me about it. But like I said, it came from a very childish place, and because all of these other issues was was happening, like people were saying that um, this guy came there. What's his name? Medical's manager came there. Mm-hmm. People were saying, eh, it's because medic, uh, a, a medical's manager came there and they saw me. They they they, they, they said that uh, the my co owner saw me. Chopping the guy at the restaurants. Mm? Oh. <laughs> like, like, it's, it's, how? First of all, me, me will be at, like, I welcome everyone. I'm very, I'm very hospital. I'm very sociable. Like, I will flex with my customers because, hey, the more I flex, the more money comes, the more they spend. You understand? Mm-hmm. So that's, that's what I, that's what I do with everybody. Mm-hmm. Male, female, I flirt with girls, I flirt with guys, just to get you guys to be comfortable and see some in chairman home. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm not bougie. I, like, I'm not stuck up. Yeah. So people were now, that's what I'm saying. Like a lot of rumors were affecting me. Things people were saying, like it was getting to me. Like I'm a human being. So like I said, the eat on your own, Ricks. I shouldn't have said that. It was very childish of me to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, you can still go to Eats Avenue and go and eat. <laughs> but if you have any complaints, please call the company. Yeah. Okay. So, so okay. Um, the 40% that you have with them, I mean, you you did mention that you have a forty percent share, and I don't know how you can just drop that. So I'm assuming I'm assuming you still yes. you still will get your shares, invest your yes. um, profits Residuals, from that yeah. or whatever you you get from yeah the forty percent. Yeah. So from what you're saying, you still have shares in the business. I still have shares in the business, and yes, you I still do. make money from that. I still make money, but from you that. just won't be like as present as, as present. Yes, you used to be. Yes, and we won't really be seeing you advertise its avenue. Exactly. So right now we're investor. hiring. We're, yeah. We're actually like, right now, I feel like also, you know, we opened in February, March. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we're in September. We're in September. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. So I think it's been a good six months. I've Most of the time when you're doing a business, you really need a hard, six months of hardcore marketing, hardcore promotion. And that's exactly what I did. So now the name is there. The quality of the food, people know it. People know the restaurant, the location, everything. So I, now we'll probably like, we're hiring more of influencers and other people to now market the brand. Because like I said, as a CEO, I don't have to always 
be present. Mm-hmm. So now we've hired other people to do the job that I was doing. Mm-hmm. So it's not too much work. In Africa here, when um, a, um, a woman is in a high position, like you, you, you were the CEO, mm-hmm. okay? When they're in high positions, people don't really like it because they are like, women are too emotional for certain positions and stuff. Now with your explanation that you have given, when it comes to mental health parts, when, when it comes to people talking and bickering and everything, makes absolute sense. But then it, it looks like you quit based off your emotions, okay? Because you were saying that some men... Some of your, the men that were moving to you got tired because they were hearing a lot of rumors. Right. So if you are, I've known you for a, a long time now, like on social media, there's nothing that this media hasn't said related <laughs> to you sleeping with people, you being an ashawo, you sleeping with people for money and stuff that you haven't been through. When we, when we um, got to know you initially, you were telling us that these things, you should J your eye. If you are not doing it, just J your yeah. eye and, st- and stuff. So... If people are saying that you are sleeping with a married man, and you are not, and you are not, how come you of all people like this got to you so much for you to drop a CEO position? Because I know how much you you loved your job or mm-hmm. love your job every single time you were hyping it. So why did this? What is so different about different about this accusation that made you quit your job? Because this ac- accusation, first of all, is not just me. It's also Betty and him. Mm-hmm. He has kids. He has a partner. Do you understand? Um, although, like, I'm not friends with the woman. I'm not enemies, but I'm a woman. If I'm married and and there are rumors going around that you and, let's say you and him, there are rumors going around that you guys are sleeping together and I see you at the, at, 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 at the restaurant. I see you at the apartment. By all means, as a woman, I'll feel some kind of way. So there's a lot of things that I can't say, but I put myself in her shoes. Okay. Ah, one time when the sister fear issue happened, somebody wants to write, not even just on Twitter, even on Instagram, some pages. I see these things. And you stole, you are still, you are still in, um, I don't want to say her name because I didn't, uh, you are still in uh, this one's husband. Uh, he has bought you the car. He has, he, he, he's, he's, he, he's gotten you uh, an apartment. Like it was rampant. It was too much. Mm-hmm. And as she being the wife that she is, you know, she's seen all these things. How is she feeling? Because I didn't know more than one person, more than two people, a lot of people are saying these things. I also put myself in her shoes and how she feels. Like I said, any business that I do, babes, whether I'm selling shoes or I'm selling a wig or even I'm promoting a friend's, there's passion in it. So that's just how I am as a woman in general. Like it's not just because it's Eats Avenue, but Sana Metie, anything I attach myself to, I promote it hardcore. But, these rumors, it was, like I said, it was affecting me, the relationships I'm getting myself involved in. Him and his relationship with, with his wife and then his kids. And, and then my, my family, my mom, like sometimes they are, they are questioning me. It's like, and see, you guys are not believing what I'm saying. You guys are not believing what other people are saying outside. So it's best I separate myself from the person. Because this is what's bringing the drama to me. This is what's bringing... So now every relationship that I get myself into, I have to now explain to the person what it really is. Now, is this person going to believe me that it's not true that I'm not dating this man? Like, it's, it was becoming a lot. I think you guys will not understand because like you said, like I'm the kind of person that I always say, oh, if you hear rumors, they're debunk. But, but this was becoming too much, bro. Like I said, I'm a human being. Like I have emotions. Like there are some things I can deal with and there's some things that I can't deal with. And it was affecting my business partner and I, our platonic relationship. Like this man is someone that has been there for me through thick and thin, through so many things. But then these little, little, little rumors I was getting into arguments with a guy I'm dating because of him. Not because of him, but because of what people are saying. Mm -hmm. Now, me as a woman, I'm getting older. I want to settle down. Mm -hmm. I want to have kids. What do I do in this situation? Do I remove myself from the business and my business partner and, and then actually focus on, 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 on my future of wanting to build? Because I am seeing somebody right now also. Thank God this person is understanding, but how long can he be understanding for? Do you, I I don't know if you guys understand what I'm trying to say. Like, it's not just about me in this situation. It's also about him and his family Mm -hmm. and his image that he also has to protect Mm -hmm. as a business person, as a husband, as a father. But people knowing right now on this show, you have, you have proclaimed that you you are still involved um, with the business. I still have shares in the business. You still have shares with the business or in the business. So isn't it kind of like the same thing? Because honestly, no. like 
I, I mean, I won't be staying prior there to, anymore. Prior to this conversation, you were deeply involved in the business. Yes. Like you were, like your face was there. You were present at this, um, the restaurant every single day. You stayed there as well. You did everything then, all of that. But you still had a relationship with the man. Like you guys were, like let's say you were close friends or whatever. So at this point, like what exactly are you doing to, to make people aware? And if, if people do like keep going on with this whole rumor thing or they still talk about it, are you going to like totally leave its avenue or you still be there like the absent partner, but still, you know. So I'll still have the shares, but like I said, you know, right now, like I said, I'm getting older. I want to focus on my relationships. Mm -hmm. Um, relationship that I'm getting myself in, you know, talking stage, but still like, like I, I'll still have that friendship with my, with my, with my business partner. But sometimes I feel like I just have to be a little bit more distant, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. love from afar. Yeah. Still check up on him because like I said, he's, he's been, he's been the most supportive. Per Let me tell you something. Yeah. For someone to support you, that's a man who's not trying to seek anything sexual from yeah. you in this country. It's not like it's rare. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm so grateful for everything that he's done for me. And like, I will always give him his flowers. When someone like, dear, like, oh yeah, guy, like he's mm -hmm. a great person. But he also understands how it was affecting me, my relationships and, and whatnot. So like, like I said, he's also very understanding. Like, what, what's he has here? Mm -hmm. Like he has seen how, how much of a toll it was going on, how much it was taking a toll on me, mm -hmm. you know? So like, I'm still going to be cool with him, but you won't see me at the apartment like, yeah. Like how I used, like I was li literally living there. Like I left mm -hmm. Spintex and I was living there because of the focus that I wanted to have on the business. But that was also not helping me in my love life. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'll still be cool with him. Like I'll still be like as I am with him, but just less. Yeah. Yeah. And the shares thing, right? It's like buying shares from MTN, Apple. Mm -hmm. You can buy shares, you can be getting your money, but you don't have to have any conversation yeah, with yes. them or communication this, with them. This question is not coming from like the whole shares bit even because you know, it's that deep, like you asked there, mm -hmm. that to the point where it's affecting their partners. Mm -hmm. So as you mean, um, let's say now the, the audience or the class, we don't know about it or the people on social media, we don't know that if he is involved with its avenue, but their partners are still away. So is this to avoid like that? If you are trying to avoid things like from getting worse between um, or amongst yourselves, because all everything you explain right now, nobody knew it. We didn't know about it. People watching this also right. didn't know about it. Right. So it means it's within your circle. Right. So are you trying to avoid what is going on around or you're trying to avoid what is going on in your circle everything. amongst like... I'm literally trying to avoid everything Do you because get it? because no no, I, no what she's saying is like am I trying to avoid what people are saying within our circles mm -hmm. like with, between between me and my my business partners because it's the it's because you, you guys said you haven't heard it mm -hmm. maybe your circles haven't heard it mm -hmm. but other circles within my circle Probably. has heard it mm -hmm. so I'm just trying to avoid those rumors and at the end of the day honestly whether I say that um my business partner and I our relationship was platonic whether I if I say now, people are going to choose to believe it or not, yeah. regardless. But I just wanted it to be clear because mm -hmm. I've never come out to say it. Yeah. Because it was a point, oh, I used to post them all the time. Ah, Then some bloggers would message me, hey, we have heard you guys are dating. Is it true? We heard you bought the car for you. Heard this. So I was like, are ah, you people? So a, a, a man and woman can be. And that's one thing about me. It's like every time that I'm posted with a male, whether it's an artist or whatever, they always as affiliate me and the person to have a sexual relationship. But that only goes to show you that their, their level of thinking mm -hmm. has nothing to do with the relationship that I have with the person. Mm -hmm. It goes to show that you can't see an, a man and a woman being friends because if it was you, you go chop them. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that, that's what it tells me. Mm -hmm. That you watching outside, you thinking that, okay, me and let's say... Um, 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 Shatawale, like, I, like me and Shatawale. Even, even um, King Promise... Even King Promise that yeah. I've known for before King Promise was promised, like Greggy, like people still are assuming that eh, me and him have a sexual relationship. It's like, that's because that's all you think about is sex when you see someone. Because maybe if it was you in his position, you would want to have sex with me. Mm -hmm. So that just goes to show you their level of thinking. But on me, anybody I'm dating, you won't see, it's only one time that I posted a guy I dated. Mm -hmm. That was Rev. <laughs> <laughs> Rev was my lesson. Me, any guy that I've dated, I've, I've never posted the person. Mm -hmm. I'm, when it comes to my private life, I'm very private. Mm -hmm. When it comes to my public life, things I want the public, public to see, you will see. So um, like you said, yes, it, it, it was a form of me trying to just cancel the rumors within my circle and also outside my circle. Mm -hmm. Whether or not people are going to believe me right now or not, I really don't care. 
Mm-hmm. But as long as I, I've, 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 I've came out and I've said my truth and that's the truth. Mm. So... Do you regret it? Do you regret like venturing into the business in the first No, thing? I've learned so much. Like I've learned so much when it comes to like, you know, owning a business in Ghana. Mm-hmm. The mentality of Ghanaians and, and even the workers, like, you know, how it is to be a business owner in this country. It's not easy, but honestly, I love it. And Mrs. Sapo knew how much I love like, I love working. I hate being idle. That's why you always see me doing something, always doing this, doing that, doing that. Because like I don't like being idle. I love exploring ideas. I love, I love exploring myself because as you grow, there are some things that you didn't even know you like. Mm-hmm. And then you come to see that you like them. And I want to explore. If I fail, I don't care. Mm-hmm. I know that one day I will succeed in something. But if I don't try it, how would I know if I can and can't do it? So I don't regret anything at all. What I do regret was coming to social media about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's one thing, like, I mean, I know, I know we don't have regrets in life, but, like, I do regret coming to social media about it because, like, you know, when you hear certain things about yourself and you know it's not true, I'm like, ah, Charlie, it's, it's painful, mm-hmm. you know? And it's like, no matter how much you scream and yell and say that, yo, this is not me, people are going to have an idea, people are going to have their own perception about it. Mm-hmm. So right now, I'm also learning that, yo, you don't have to prove a point to nobody but to God. Mm-hmm. God is the only person, God is the only thing that I have to prove myself to. Because at the end of the day, no matter what I say, you are, you are going to have an idea about me. Yeah. You are going to have your own ideology about me. So like I said, you make mistakes and you learn from them. And that's just what it is. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like you've had this whole thing going on, like this is the second time. This is the first was with the wine shop and now with the Eats Avenue. The bit. wine shop, I you know, like I said, with the wine shop, I didn't own it. Mm-hmm. The woman and I went into an agreement behind closed doors that I'll be the front for it, mm-hmm. just to gather the, the just to audience. gather the audience, the publicity, and the people, and and, and it worked. Yeah. But then later on, she fucked me over. She like. Bro, it was so bad and dirty, but I've moved past it. A year later, the place closed down. <laughs> That's what happens when you fuck me over. You don't mess with God's child. Yeah. A year later, the, the business closed down. So, um, but, with, but this one is different. Yeah. Like, like, I had ownership. I signed. Like, I have shares in it. So, people are saying, hey, I lied about being, I never lied about being a CEO. I, maybe I over-exaggerated the truth on UTV that I said I was owner. I should have been more clear and said that I am a co-owner. I have a business partner. I have shares. Mm-hmm. So, I think that's because people kept playing that video when the whole issue came out, yeah. the UTV video bit. Mm-hmm. But, like I said, you make mistakes, you learn from mm-hmm. it. I've taken accountability. Of course, I fucked up. Who never fuck up? Hands in the air. <laughs> no hands. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. So, is this something you are, like, back to my question. Is it, do you think you ever enter into another agreement like that again? Or this time, if you want to start your business, it'll just be you and yourself and then the, the people around, maybe your family members or something. Oh, I never mix family with business. That one, yeah. No, no. Mm. Um, especially be before. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this is a learning curve. Um, who knows? Maybe I will. Maybe I'll get into business and 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 take whatever I've learned from this situation into that business. Or maybe maybe I won't. The future the future is bright, and like I can't say I will. I can't say I won't. It depends on the situation. When the situation comes, then I'll know what to do. But everything that's happened from the wine shop to this is a learning curve for me. Mm-hmm. And I repeat this: I never lied about owning the business. Mm-hmm. I over-exaggerated the truth and I should have said I co-owned it because like I said, I did have a business partner in mm-hmm. this situation. So um, there's been three businesses associated with you that I know. There's one that is the wine, number two, the swimwear brand mm-hmm. and number three, Eats Avenue. Mm-hmm. Now with all these three businesses, the only the one- The swimwear brand, I never really launched Yes, it. that's what yeah. I'm coming to. Okay. So with the first, um, the wine shop, I've been like, before we met, I've been a fan of Effie. I just want to put that out there. So I know a lot of things about her. So first, we were following the wine thing and then something went wrong. The swimwear brand, I was waiting for you to post. I saw you doing the photo shoots. You never posted it. Mm-hmm. Number three, Eats Avenue. I've been going to Eats Avenue because of you mm-hmm. and now you've left. So like- you I've can't, not left. No, Stop you've not left. That. You've not left, but like you, you My don't front will it not anymore. Be right you don't front it anymore. Uh-huh. So I've like, as an audience, as a fan, mm-hmm. that I feel like I've been strung along within these three businesses and you've left me out in the desert <laughs> like that. So then if you start a new business, how are you going to assure me that this is the one that I have to stay and then support and be with it and that you will not leave me <laughs> alone? Like, where, how, how, how no, do I a, get that assurance? No, obviously, that's a great question. And that's what I'm saying. All of these things, and I'm glad that we even ha- I have 
I'm a part of this podcast where I can come out and take accountability and then talk about my mistakes as a human being because at the end of the day, I'm a human being first. I'm going to make mistakes along the way and I'm still growing and I'm learning from these mistakes that I'm making. So like, yes, you being a fan, first of all, you should know how real I am. Mm -hmm. If I make mistakes, I come out in front and I and, and I apologize and I take accountability for it. That's the sincerity in me. And any business that any any business that you want to follow, you should see how sincere the business is, mm -hmm. the people behind the business, how they are. So you're seeing that from me. And like I said, I'm human. Mm -hmm. You're human. I'm sure you've made mistakes along the way, but that doesn't stop me from supporting you or being your friend or 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 like associate my my associating myself with your brand. So with the reassurance, you would have to just make that decision on your own, but with my actions. It's not like I came here and said, "Oh yeah, you know, fuck it's having you." No. I came here and I said, "You know what? I yeah. fucked up." The business I love that I, I like Look at my actions mm -hmm. after situations has happened. Mm -hmm. Look at how I'm 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 owning up to my to my fuck up. Yeah. That's what you should focus on. Because like I said, everybody know that Fyodor is a real person, but sometimes too, the surroundings you find yourself can have um can nurture behavior. When I came into this country, I was I was very up, up front, very blunt, very real. I was living in my mom's house. It wasn't painted. I talked about it. I talked about taking yeah. Uber. Like I was, I've always been real, but the society that I was also in didn't really like the realness of me because mm -hmm. the society itself, it's not as real. Mm -hmm. So now I'm, now me being here, I'm, I've also realized that the society is nurturing me into something that I wasn't. Mm -hmm. I'm now fabricating, I'm now lying, I'm not being real like I used to. So now there's also an eye opener for me to take a step back and see, say, is this the direction that I want to go with my life? Yeah. Like, do I want to be like the people? Not all of the people, but the majority of people, you know, how they say these celebrities, they live fake life, they live fake lives. Now I'm becoming those people that I said were fake. So this is also an eye opener for me to take a step back and reassess mentally, emotionally, spiritually, you know, like I shouldn't follow the crowd because the crowd is going this way. The crowd may be going the wrong way. Like I was, I was, I was, I was living this kind of fake life, kind of, not really hundred percent, but kind of. So like back to your question, like the reassurance has to, it's going to have to come from you and also have to come from my actions. Mm -hmm moving forward. Yeah. Like, I really apologize to people who have supported me. Like, I feel like, you know, they see me. But one thing that you guys can't take away from me is my dedication and my hard work. Like, anything that I associate myself with, honestly, like, I put 100% into it, whether it's mine or not. But this has been a learning curve. I've learned so much from this and I'm going to take whatever I learned into the next business venture. Period. But with the body uh, by order, um, I never really launched it. It was yeah. more of like, learning things along the way. Like, Charlie, doing a business in Ghana, it's manufacturing your own things here. And I was very young too. Like, it's now that I'm a bit more mature, more understanding. Like I said, working even in it, um, being a CEO for Eats Avenue has also opened my eyes to how people work in this country, how it is to manage a business or like just, just be a CEO. And it's not, and that from Sanya Lim, like and it's not easy, but like I've learned a lot from it and I'm going to use what I've learned into the next business. Period. Amen yeah. to that. <laughs> so yes, we've addressed um, if you're those um, eat avenue issue. I don't know if it's an issue, but yes. So right now we are going into the main topic, which is um, stereotypes with women. But I, there are some common stereotypes with women that I want to first talk, read up, uh, mention to you guys. Then we dissect and go into because the three of us here have all been ha or have all had businesses one way or the other. Some have dropped it. Some are in it, not in it. Some still have it. So we have the perspective of different, different, different places. Right. So if yeah, read the misconceptions and then okay. we will dissect it. So one of the misconceptions or stereotypes with women in business is that women, women will lie on their looks rather than their skills to succeed. Hmm. How? How, dear, how? <clears throat> it depends. I feel like it depends, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to say, that it depends. So um, let's take influencing mm -hmm. as an example. So we have, let's say, like all of us sitting here right now, we have different forms of businesses that we do. I, she said, I had a business, I dropped it, I focused on influencing and then my nine to five. You have an actual business and you're an influencer. You are a superstar and you have, you have a business and then you are also kind of like an influencer. When it comes to influencing, most of, I'm just going to be realistic, most of 
the girls rely on their looks. Yes. People like people because they are beautiful. Mm -hmm. You can follow someone because the person is just pretty. Mm -hmm. And that's how the person makes their money. Because I'm pretty. I just have to sit down, take a picture. I'm beautiful. People will like the pictures. And brands brands follow um, numbers. Brands don't actually follow skill when it sometimes, unless they are looking for some specific, something specific in that person. That's why you realize that most nano influencers are still um, patronized by these brands, but they are not patronized all the time. Usually goes to the beautiful girls. Well, thankfully, we are hardworking and you, when you watch our pages too, you can see that we put work into the things that we do, like our YouTube channels, our reels, our TikToks. We shoot from different angles. We dedicate our time and then everything that we can to make um, what we are putting out there good. But I'm not going to say and lie that some people don't rely on their looks. Yeah. But then, you, but then no, this one is a woman in, in general. Business, like, and, in business. No, and, and honestly, I cannot... For a business to stand, your mm-hmm. looks will not make a business stand. Mm-hmm. I, you yeah. need to have skill. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. need to have good work ethic. Mm-hmm. You need to have dedication. You need mm-hmm. to have passion. Mm-hmm. You need to be hardworking. Mm-hmm. You cannot have a business and then sleep. And 1, 1, 1 p.m. you're still sleeping. Yeah. Uh, me, babes, 6 a.m. I'm up. Mm-hmm. 5.30, I'm up. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no there's no woman in business who is succeeding in her business mm-hmm. and is only relying on their looks. There's yes. no, it doesn't, it doesn't and, make and sense. And even those, those who depends. rely on their looks, those who rely on their looks, mm-hmm. They have to learn how to do makeup. They have to learn yes. how to dress. Mm-hmm. They have to learn how to do this. They have to wake but up in the morning. But they have a makeup artist. You still yes. have to wake up early. Yes. Early too. To, to do, do everything. Whatever you need so to even do. if it is looks, you can't just have a pretty face and be looking shabby and then get the followers. Because some people follow you because you look good, but she can dress. Yes. I can get yeah. inspo from her. Yes. Yeah. Her hair is always And even yeah. dressing, you have to put things together. Yes. It's not easy just to put things together. Yes. Have your hair laid. All the, the, people don't know. You think sitting there getting your hair done is easy. It's not <laughs> easy, yo. Like, if, but, I hate getting my nails done because they have to sit there for like two hours mm-hmm. just to get your nails done. But you see, the, so the skills easy. required to handle an actual business, yes. like what you guys have, mm-hmm. is totally different from yes. the skills required to have yes. an influencer business. Yes. Yours is different because you you definitely need dedication. Like you need to you need to come up with new, you need to be innovative to be able to handle and manage your business. You can't just bring up, bring out um, one thing, even your, your business, you can't bring out one menu and then keep it running no. till the end. Mm-hmm. You have to introduce yes. new things. Your salon, you can't just sit down and say that, oh, we are only doing bread, so we are good. Mm-hmm. Along the line, you would introduce something else that will draw attention, like, right? Yeah. But it's different from somebody being an influencer. Yeah. Right. So that's right why now, I said we are not doing depends. influencing, we are doing business. business. You can't rely on your, because yes. I don't care no, if you are beautiful, you if you don't offer good service, I'm not coming But there. even yeah. if you are beautiful, crumble, so is that every day we'll just be staring at your beauty? Yes. <laughs> Look at God. <laughs> me, I'm here to braid my hair and say yeah. you're beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't care about that. <laughs> like I want, I'm here to come and eat, 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 eat if you're not beautiful. beautiful. So that means I should bring trash if food. If it's no, service, trash I won't come again. I had to like reorientate the the waitresses. Like literally every Every morning, letting them know, like, listen, customer service is number one here. Mm-hmm. I don't care if the, cus- the customer is always right. We orient their brain and their mind. Mm-hmm. Somebody will say, oh, they've been a waitress for five years, but skill, zero, no skill. So I had to literally be there all the time. Like, sometimes I'll give them some IB and they know that they're doing something <laughs> wrong. They don't change it. <laughs> like, 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 you can't just rely on your... No, I don't yeah. think any woman in business relies on their beauty. Mm-hmm. If, especially if they want their business to like it, to be long lasting. Yeah. Even if you have a manager of the page, we have to manage the manager. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's not. Mm-hmm. It's not. You have to like, be calling. You have yeah. to be calling. That's why I had to be there, mm-hmm. babes. Nine a.m. I was there. Six a.m. Seven a.m. I will. I go to sleep. Like, even even when I'm sleeping, I will take a nap. I have to go upstairs. I was in America, zooming in the camera, seeing if the food. Hey, Sharif, <laughs> put, put, put the bacon on the thing, Mau. Mau. Like Mau, <laughs> I'm calling Mau. Where is the delivery? They are calling me. So like, you cannot just rely on your beauty when it comes yeah. to business. Like, you really have to have dedication. So if you don't have dedication, don't go into business mm-hmm. because. If you don't have dedication in your business, there you don't care if it fails; it will just fail. Even yeah. as you mentioned, like sometimes you wake up very early to go to the market. Yes, you still need With education coffee. for that. You don't yes. use your beauty to bring to go in the to the goods. market. Mm. Ah, I'll be in the kitchen <laughs> chopping things. So, like Charlie, forget that. There's no woman in business that only relies on their beauty. Every woman in business has a skill, and I know for a fact they are passionate about what they are doing. Yeah. Nobody wakes. Nobody wants to wake up early f- because of what? No, they need money. Yeah. So the next, um, the next stereotype is that women are too emotional for leadership roles. <laughs> what do you guys think about that? I don't think the word emotional. I think women are too passionate. Mm-hmm. We have passion. Okay. And maybe some women are emotionally unstable. Before you get into a business, you have to make sure you ch- you're emotionally stable, mm-hmm. especially working in this country. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of people are not up to speed when it comes to certain things. Gisela, you might, you might want... 
if if you were the one, maybe you own a business mm-hmm. and and uh, you're not the worker, but you've hired workers. The workers might not do the job a hundred percent the way you want it to be done. Mm-hmm. So that's why you are there, mm-hmm. so that you direct them. That's the that's where the passion comes from. If they're doing it wrong, you become emotional. Like, oh, why are you doing this thing? Like, I've told you ten thousand times, but you're still doing it wrong. So emotion, passion is an emotion. So what what are they trying to say that women like are too emo- emotional? I so, think uh, it it depends on the the person we are talking because honestly, yeah. Uh, we are two different people. Like you said, passion. You approach things from the perspective of passion. Me, I'm highly emotional. So I'm not going to lie and say that, oh, my emotions don't, um, what's it called, affect my, my work ethic. Mm-hmm. I can be highly frustrated if something is not going my way. Especially when it's like, you've planned something so much that's maybe, oh, for instance, I had a business in the past, like two years ago, I had a lingerie business and then I had a shoot. I, I planned a whole photo shoot. I'm telling you, like, at that time, I didn't even have money. My last money that I had. I used it to plan a photo shoot. I, I brought in models. Gladly, a friend of mine gave me her models. I didn't even have to pay for the models. I, I had um, the location too was just given to me because I've, I had worked with the hotel before and the photographer came, everything. Now, the photographer was stressing me so much that we had a month, a whole month to plan for him to um, edit these photos and videos and send it to us so we can just post and launch these lingeries. I never got them till now. I never got them. And then it became, you know, you can't attach a scandal to your business. No. No matter what happens, you can't just put your business out there like the dirty laundry about your business. You can't put it out right. there. My, my emotions led me to do that with the photographer. We just had it online on Twitter. We just went on and on and on, like back and forth about this whole situation. To the point where other people, like before, I wanted to be a ghost owner of the business because I didn't mm, want anybody to know that I was handling because I didn't want to attach my personality or my brand to the business. Right. But now people came to know that the business yeah. was mine because I put it out there. Mm. So you need that level of maturity. Exactly. But you, it will take time for you to get there. That's, that's yeah. what I'm saying. It will take time. It, it, it will take for the things that a you long go time. through. It will, it will take for the things that you go through to make you mature in the next move. Like everything that I've gone through now is only making me more mature and wise in my next decisions. Mm. So at the end of the day, what well, you think some men, men, trust yeah. me. Yeah, by the end of the day, yeah, you've had three different businesses and then at the end of the day, your emotions still led to your, some actions like taking... In fact, let's talk about the other two. Let's put body by if you aside because that one was that just one circumstances. Wasn't right. Yeah, but your emotions still led you to make some decisions when it comes to like these two businesses. Right, and like I said, I'm still You're learning. You're still learning, exactly. So that's what I'm saying. I'm st- So that means everything that I've learned, some people have um, 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 counselors mm-hmm. or or even... What do you, what do you call yeah. those people? Not PR, um, not therapists. Oh, or be or be advisors mm-hmm. to advise. We, when you're doing a business, you also need advisors. Mm-hmm. Someone to advise you on on what to do and what not to do. Yeah. Those are some 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 decisions you also have to take when you're doing a business. If these things didn't happen, would I know that? Okay, next time I need to get an advisor to advise me that if yeah, don't do this, do this, don't do that. Do you get what I'm saying? So, yeah. a woman, yes, I feel like women. Uh, people in general, we're emotional people, mm-hmm. men or women. But when it gets to business, we have to learn how to separate the emotions, emotions with the business. And that's just what it is. Mm. Sorry, you were going to say something. It's okay. Oh, no, say, say it. it. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have um, certain, because I've, I've, I've experienced men in leadership positions mm-hmm. and I've experienced women having leadership positions. And I've seen women cry over certain things that... <laughs> like, man, so let me, gi- let me use a man as an example. Mason Yusuf. He has a perfume brand, right? Every day he's on on the business, on the business, on the business, right? And I have a business. I'm always on the business. And then I guess people telling me that I think like a man. But it's not supposed to be because I like sometimes I put certain... Emo- My best friend called me some days ago that her laptop was fault and she was crying about it and everything. But I we, I consoled her and everything. By my mind, I'm like, why are you crying? <laughs> Find another laptop. Why are you crying? You get it. So I feel like women are emotional in certain kind of ways because there are some things where you are crying. You are doing this. You are doing this. But Princess, it's it different. A lot of no. things happen. went wrong that weekend. That's why. It's yeah, different, like guys. It happens. You know, like certain things happen. But it's a, lo- a lot of things can go on with women. Like maybe something small can happen by you in your period. Mm-hmm. then it will mess you yeah. up so hey. I feel like it's because of those certain hey, things that, time. those hormonal yeah. issues one are the time. things that yeah. make people one say time. women are emotional and men don't go through that don't, don't go through, don't that. Go through yeah. those so kind of things one, one time eh, I told Sharif he's, uh, he's one of the chefs I, I was going through, I was cramping I was in my prayer <laughs> yeah I said Sharif he should make me this is the french toast thing yeah this french toast supposed to add egg whatever whatever he brought it to me 
I was quiet. I looked at it. Sorry for the question. On a normal day, I wouldn't have over exaggerated yeah, like that. Yeah, but yeah. I had my prayer that day. Yeah. And you know how I like my French toast. <laughs> and then you bring those foolish things to me. I flipped it. <laughs> yeah, so it's just some circumstances that can make women. But right. then I don't think it is they are too emotional not to deserve leadership yeah. roles. Yes, yes. Because there are women too that don't get period cramps, that mm-hmm. don't get this, that are still able to handle leadership roles. And even if they do have roles. it, they handle it well. Yes. See, yes. see, let me tell you, in the corporate world, for instance, HR... The way, if your HR is a woman, the way she will, she, will, she will handle a situation is different from if your HR was a man. Mm-hmm. Women HR are always emotional, especially when you do something wrong and let's say they are calling you in to talk to you about it. And you know that uh, you are not supposed to be doing these things, but when a, a man, a manager is talking to you, he's telling you point blank that he doesn't care if you cry. HR is considering your emotions. I don't think it's men or women. I think it depends on the person because there are some HR women who are very strict. They're stern. They say like it's, it's A, it's B, it's whatever it is. Really? I think it depends, yes. Because I've not met an HR like and that. And also, I think also depending on the environment. Maybe maybe here in Ghana is like that, but maybe you go to Nigeria, if you go to Cote d'Ivoire, if you mm-hmm. go to America, mm-hmm. like they don't do that. So I think it depends on the person. Regardless, in my previous job, we used to have like meetings every Monday morning and then the boss is there saying that you like the way he's talking to the men is the same way he's talking to the women. At the end of the meeting, the men are okay, but the women are sad. <laughs> they really emotionally unstable. The women are either sad or like they are going, like they, they are, are not happy. They are they offended. offended. But the men just take it like, they know that, oh, maybe this man shouldn't have spoken to me like that. Mm-hmm. But they've taken it cool. Like they're just moving around yeah. like about their day. Women, females, we, we've, we've, we've been allowed to express our emotions and men have always not been allowed to express their emotions. That's why no matter what it is, whether yes. it's a workplace men or whatever Men like it is, to tag it out. Yes. yes. Men don't cry. The men don't men cry. Men don't this. And that's yeah. the notion. That. So yeah. I think they, yeah. they take it also into the business. Like, yeah. Charlie, I'm not gonna get. That's why some men can fight today. And then two seconds later, they yeah, are buddies friends. again. Yeah. Yes. They don't. They don't really um um use their emotions to 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 like do any, to live their lives. Yeah. Me, I just believe that most women are not solutions oriented. No, you have I to go so. through it first yeah, before because, we well, make a decision. Yeah, 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 because yeah. sometimes you can have a partner. There are some women, right? They will have a partner. They have an issue. They will call their partner that this and this and this happened. He will try and offer a solution. Then they are angry. That's how They're I am. Like, <laughs> guilty. Wait, like my partner will offer solution. Because why yes, are you giving me solutions? Just they listen want to you me. To, to be a listening ear. But men to their own is, okay, this has okay, happened. Let's find out. Yes. Yes. But solution. women to they need time to, to rest and, and cry out. it out. To process everything. I think every, business, every female business owner needs a therapist. <laughs> <Yes>. Honestly. <laughs> Honestly. Because, because I, I feel like some people, they out there, they look like like they are the strongest women, but maybe like you said, yeah. I don't see you flipping off, no. flipping your your the French toast yeah. on, on the Instagram right. page of Ita Venue. Right. But you, but when you go there, you think that Efia is like yeah. she's the strongest person yeah. there. So I feel like because yeah. maybe women. One time I cry, I had a meeting with them and I was crying. And I'm like, you guys are making me sad. <laughs> oh, ask I was crying. Like I had tears coming down. So you guys are making me sad. You guys are not coming to work on time. You guys are messed up. But why are you guys doing this? You want to ruin my business for me? Well, this this time you want to ruin for me. It's oh, madam. It's no, no, madam. So it's like yeah. Like I think I think us women like. We are emotional beings, but they're coming from a good place, yeah. a good space. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that doesn't and, mean that we can't be leaders. And they are men that are emotional too. Yeah. So but the majority of the time is, no, but most of the time, they are men that are and time to see some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they are wrong, and maybe they will bang their hand on something and just move on, move their hand <laughs> yeah, yeah, and find a solution. Move, right. But women will cry small, then take a deep breath, right. then call our friends to rant, then we are now going to look for the solution. Right. Maybe, maybe that could be yeah, the reason. Good, but but yeah. then we still deserve leadership. Oh, of course we and do. And the next part is, um, Another stereotype, common, common stereotype is that women sleep their way to the top. Lonely at the top. <laughs> lonely, lonely, lonely. Which what topic again? again? Oh. Be, oh, if, if women were sleeping their way to the top, why don't we have more women CEOs or more women millionaires or more yeah. women billionaires? See, Which top? When, when the conversation to, is so tired, so way to the that, top. Like, oh. when, when it comes to sexual stuff, eh, I'll always put it on the men that it is them. They are, they are, they are the, the ones the one sleeping their way to the top because when it, when it comes to, like when we're talking about emotions, I'll agree that women, there always is like, our flaw is the emotion. But when it comes to sexual stuff, in businesses it's always men even Majority when you're going, to, time, even yes. you're going to find a, a job, job yes they want to sleep with you yes. they'll finish the comment and say women like sleeping yes, with you you are the, you ones, are the one initiating you, this because like, you could have looked at my CV and picked me but he said no I gotta show you Toto now <laughs> 
I've shown you to show me your left breast. Show me. Like, like even crap, <laughs> even crap. But most of the time, too, when a woman ends up sleeping with a man, yeah, for a business deal, no, sometimes she even gets bent. She doesn't even get the deal. Hey, hey. ho. Most of the time, yeah. Oh, like, they just do it for free. They, they just, just do it. They'll lie they to you. Let them get They'll it. lie to you about, oh, yeah. Even, even let's say, even men in relationship, dating in general. Oh, a man can't even lie. Oh, 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 you don't worry. I got you. After they chop you, they don't give you shit. <laughs> hey, Someone top are they it's, going even, to? it's even when they've not chopped you that they are even spending more on you. Once they get it, they don't give yeah, it to you. So, because why? What? What's the what, what again? Because Me. right now, if a man is coming to sleep with a woman for the woman to get the job, after he sleeps with her, it's in a man's hands to so either give her the job or not. Mm, and how exactly. many see like? I really hate when people say those things that women sleep their way to the top. Like, bro, like, are you serious? See, if, if, if even if you're a woman and you slept your way to the top and you are dumb, you can't stay at that top. You come yeah, back yes. down. No, you have to keep sleeping. Yes. <laughs> you yes. have to keep sleeping. But how will your, how your you business to, survive? Uh, as you are sleeping, how will it survive? Exactly. So as as the way as you got it is how you have to maintain it. Me, I'm so and tired of this conversation. It's so because annoying. You see women living like the most basic, normal life. Good, at least getting their... Um, Things to chop, nice clothes, nice hair, nice, nice clothes. hair, and then you, you like, she slept around what, for it. The job I'm doing can't pay for so that. that. Means your in, mother- our, in our last episode. <laughs> <laughs> and if your mother is no, not doing it, then that why means, did you no, see because it? the people who are always saying talking this shit, no doubt, that means your mom, who is a boss, no, she also slept her way to the top. Because in our last episode, the the one um, the one that just aired, somebody on TikTok, right? Somebody said something about how um the person asked an innocent question that what jobs do we do? Because I mentioned the cars that we all drive. Mm-hmm. And the person asked that what jobs do we do? Because they would also like to venture into that. And then somebody else came to say that why does the person think that we work? We we, we are selling our coochies out and that's how we're able to afford it. Hey. And me things like that will not reply because first of all, you are very dumb. Very dumb. You're very, very, very so stupid. It doesn't so even get me. Yeah. Like, it doesn't get like, 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 it's so boring. Like it's so boring. Like it's so boring. It's so boring. No, it's and so then at the end of the day, like it's so crazy up. because people will only see you where you are now. Yeah. They've not seen you where you were eight years ago, yeah. ten years ago, yeah. even twelve years ago, no, even four years ago. Truck like four a.m. to where you were. You so that's why those things when people are calling you and shower that you have slept around me, it doesn't bother me because I honestly like I know where I'm coming from. Mm-hmm. I know the Ubers I was taking. I know where my car was, my leg. Mm-hmm. Like I know, like I remember those times. But then like it's it's that's what I'm saying. The people who say those things, it's. That's the level of thinking that they have. It's low. And that means if it was them, that's what they, that's what they would yeah. do. They're only projecting themselves. And me, those people said, people said, think, cry. It's even boring because this life, what are we doing? We will <laughs> die. When we die, okay, when I die right now and you find out that I'm an Asha, well, I'm dead. You are chatting about me. I'm gone. I can't hear you. I'm so you can't gone. talk and talk and talk. Whatever. I mean, that's why I do what I want to. Yeah. Because yeah, they coin. Yeah. Let me just enjoy the life nice one. If I die, cast. Right. Eh? Let no, just leave, honestly, let's like, to do, like, like you, I, you have to, I think as an individual, you have to get to a place where it's like, it's either you're going to care about what people say mm-hmm. and live your life based on what people say or don't care and just focus. Mm-hmm. Like, and, 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 and stay with that. Like, right now, I'm really sh- I used to be like I don't care I care I don't care I don't care because yes like it hurts it hurts knowing that like yo I don't do any of these things these people say that I do not even one per- not even two percent of it mm-hmm. but like am I gonna focus on, on on that and put my energy into that or just focus on what I'm doing know where my goal is and focus on that goal and, 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 and just keep going for it so if I have slept with someone I'm sorry to use you as an example so if you have slept with the, the owner of the, the Eat Avenue to get Eat Avenue what is the person saying it's doing for, about their, their, their life if and it's easy going because if it's easy, it's easy to just do sleep with someone and get a restaurant <laughs> hey, you like, just sit there behind your phone you have to do to, 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 to just have sex with somebody you do restaurants hey, restaurants hey. on the rooftop oh, with a pool with a pool it's not like it's on the, it's on the ground floor it's on the last floor with What's the pool. skill? Hey. <laughs> nah. Then we also come for lectures. So no, like, I feel like before you open your mouth to say something, deep it. Like think about it. No, but it. they don't. They, they, if they, it's if, so crazy to me. If they had the mental capacity to actually think before they speak, they wouldn't do those things. And they know. They don't have, have that capacity. They, the people they've slept with, what did they do for what them? Do for them? Hey. So you know that sex can't get you that. Because exactly. if, it could, if it could, it's not like God gave some people the coochie and he left other yes. people without it all. Yes. Apart from the men. Everyone if men cry, you can go and use your penis for something. And yes. If it's that easy, 
Why are we all easy? here? Like, why exactly. do we all do the why same job? Why am I jobs? here sitting up, uh, but do, do, doing a podcast? Eh? <laughs> and then just go and chop and go and go and go and live on an island. Imagine. Like, like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, mm. even in the corporate world that they say that, oh, people sleep their way to the top. That's why I said that. Even if you slept with your boss and then he, 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 he um, what's it called? He Elevated. promoted you. There's no way you stay at that promote that promoted place or that promotion you still get. If you're because if you are dumb, you are you are literally showing working. It's like you fine, I've been promoted. What am I showing to the other employees that yes, I deserve this? That I deserve spot? this position. Because other people will, will give fight you, back. You can even stay in that position. Other people will because fight you need back. You scale to be in that position and mm-hmm. to stay in that position. Other people will fight back. When in my previous job, my one of my bosses, she was a woman. And then for somebody like that, imagine somebody saying that she slept around to, to get promoted because that woman is so fucking hardworking. Like, like how the business be running? Um, she, and she exactly. was one of the few, there were just two female managers and she was one of them. And this woman, they, her work ethic, if yeah, then somebody would be sitting somewhere saying that she was sleeping around. Sleeping with whom? <laughs> so I think it's, oh. it's, 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 it's low thinkers, low vibrational yeah. people who really, and who really think like that because there's no way that some big, some, some eloquent or intelligent person will actually Utter words like that. Yeah. Normally, when you go on social media, hey. it's the foolish people. That, the, the, mm. It's honestly the fools who say yes. those things. It's yes. so nobody crazy like to me, me. Will go and, me. Nobody like me will go and say something like that. Nobody like a person like you wouldn't go and say something like that. Someone like you would not go and say something yes. like that. If I see Gisela with a guy and I work it together, the first thing on my mind is not going to be that Gisela is sleeping with a guy for this. Girl. I'll say so. Oh, they are working together. I saw them call us a shower on the most random post that had to laugh. You know what their post was? <laughs> mm. I said men should use perfume. <laughs> so you are a shower. A shower girl. So I was like, <laughs> what does smelling good have to do with it? A shower. Like, you see why I can't take people on, on, yeah, on social media seriously? Honestly. Ah, like, people can. are angry about everything. 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 So Just, they're looking for a channel to throw their anger. I, can, more, I don't so. understand. Though. Remember, I don't think it's something we have to understand. One time you it. called me, she mm-hmm. was going to buy um, hair bundles, you know, the one they use for braiding for her shop. And then they, they, they somebody cracked their windscreen or something. Mm-hmm. And she was so stressed. This girl woke up very early in the morning to go to Accra. Princess oh. doesn't like going to Accra. They broke my windscreen. They broke her windscreen. Oh. Oh. You come and tell me that she's sleeping around. around. Ah. Okay. Like I mean, my mother gave me my shop, so if maybe I slept with my mom. <laughs> maybe it could be. <laughs> no, but the but the but the, like, but the stereotypes that people um tend to use for women, especially when it comes to business, is really yeah. wrong. But at the end of the it's day, so weird. I feel like we don't have to really put the energy and and focus on it. Yeah. If you're a woman in business and you're and you and you know you're um, you're you're hardworking. You know that you have skill. You know that you, you you know what got you to where you are. Just focus on it. Yeah, but it must be very painful, though. Yeah, it putting is. In That's your, what I'm your, saying. Your, like yeah. putting your best foot forward, and somebody sitting and somewhere every saying day, that you're just constantly. using you. Yeah, it yeah. must and be very painful. Um, a bad encounter with a woman. It's an individual thing. You can't just have one encounter with this person and say, okay, then all, all the women, women are, like are that. Yeah. The way Gisela says, all men all are never and never. Oh, one encounter. That's a different. That's a different. <laughs> but yeah, if you close the show for us. So today was more of confessions, confessions, confessions. <laughs> like I really, I'm, I'm really happy that I we have this platform for us to really express ourselves yeah. and talk about our emotions because a lot of people are also going through what we're going through. Yeah. When you read the comments, people are really happy that we have these kind of conversations mm-hmm. and like, I'm glad I have you girls here Aww. who didn't judge the, the situation and you guys actually <laughs> waited to hear from me. Of course. Like, of course. Yeah, girl. Got my they could never make me hate they you. They could never. <laughs> yeah, somebody said that very soon we'll fight. Oh, the they should come out. What will we fight yeah, about? We'll fight. We'll fight. Oh. Yeah, it's okay. We are tired. They can't even something. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, but, but on, a, on, a, on a more serious note, please, guys, um, continue supporting Eats Avenue. Please don't stop eating at Eats Avenue. We'll eh? see. What's we see? I said don't stop. <laughs> the palm yeah, wine, is, the the palm wine is still the best palm wine in town. Okay. And um, shout outs to Mr. Sapong. Like, you've been a very supportive person in my life. Mm. And like, I'm so grateful for you and everything that you've done for me. Um, I will continue to keep you in my prayers and support Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sapong. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Sapong. Mr. Sapon. Kobe. <laughs> Mr. Sapong, Sapo, mommy, she is. You know, you can't thank you. <laughs> All right, okay, thank you for your fear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to do this. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Sapong. Oh, yeah, he has like one of the best hotels in, in, in Kumasi, Rich Condos. Yeah. Oh, you heard of Rich Condos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anybody who goes to uh, Kumasi, go to, make sure you stay at Rich Condos. And, yeah. yeah. Shout out to everybody for watching Rants, Bands, and Confessions. We love you guys and your support. Don't worry. We've got more coming. More. (laughs) This this is the bottom crowd. We get Ah, more just coming. Next next week. Next week. Bye, guys. Bye, Bye guys. guys.